and we are live. I think we're live. Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. And as always with these live streams, please let us know in the chat if you can hear us and you can see us okay. Hopefully you can. Um, I'm joined by Rob. Howdy. And Robert. Hello. The other Rob couldn't make it tonight. Yep. Otherwise, it would have been three Robs and Paul. Uh, we're going to be playing Tiletum. 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 Tilletum. I think I would go with that. Pronunciation of the game has been one of the biggest challenges of this. It's a Latin word. Uh, we're going to say tilatum is what we're going to call it. Um, yeah, welcome to a tutorial and playthrough video. Uh, this is a sponsored video. Thank you very much to Board and Dice for sponsoring this video. But I also do rely on the financial support of the Patreon campaign to keep the channel going. So if you like the content, obviously give the video a like, give it a thumbs up and all of that lot. Um, but if you are in a position to be able to support me on Patreon and help me continue to make videos, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Right, a few things before we start. We're going to be teaching you the game as we play. We've all played the game this afternoon, so we are all experts at the game. We all know how to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a short overview of how it plays at the start, and then we're going to start playing and we will explain the rules as we go along. So you don't have to sit here and listen to a full rules explanation. So the first part of the video is going to be quite slow as we're going to be explaining the actions as we take them. Um, but then after that, you'll just see us playing through it. We're going to try our best to play by the correct rules. Now, what I mean by that is we, we are going to play by the correct rules. And I think Michael from Board and Dice is going to be in the chat. So we're going to get the rules right tonight. But as always with these live streams, the heat of the moment might miss, might miss something. And quite often with these videos, somebody will leave a comment after the video has gone, gone out to say, oh, Paul, you forgot to get two points. So if you're watching this live and you spot us making a mistake or missing something, please let us know in the chat. We will keep an eye on the chat. And we'll try and we'll try and correct it. But if you're watching this back afterwards, I would strongly recommend you turning on the subtitles and changing them to the Klingon channel. And that way, if anybody points out anything that we did wrong, I can add some annotations in using the Klingon subtitles afterwards. Don't try and turn on the Klingon subtitles if, if you're watching this live, because there won't there won't be any. Um, right. That said, I assume everything's working on fine. There's a bet on Robert winning. Well, Robert won the game this afternoon, so we will see. Right quick overview of what we're trying to do. Let's first go to the theme of the game. So the theme of the game is um, I'm trying to see if there's a, a if there's a year when this is set. It's just saying we are rich merchants traveling throughout Europe uh, from the city of Tilatum, which in modern day is Tilt, which is in Belgium. So you were right. It is in Belgium. Uh, to Venice during the days of early Renaissance. There you go. That is, that is when it's set. We're going to be traveling around the board to various cities, acquiring trade contacts for wool and iron. We're going to be established trading houses. Uh, we're going to be collecting resources to fulfill contracts. And we're going to help to construct monumental cathedrals to gain the favor of the noble families. And we're going to participate in important fairs where our main business occurs. Right. We're going to be playing the game over four rounds. We all start with 10 points. Why do we start with 10 points? Can you lose? Oh, you can lose points. Yes, you can lose, you points. Can lose points. So we start time. with 10 points and it will be the player after four rounds who has the most points. Uh, in each of the four rounds, it is divided into five phases. Phase one, we're going to be rolling some dice and putting them on the action board. Phase two is the main part of the round and that is where we're going to be taking turns to take actions. We've decided randomly that Robert is the start player. So Robert will take the first action, then Rob, then me, then Robert, then Rob, then me, then Robert, then Rob, then me. That's phase two done. We will all take three actions per round. Then phase three is the king's track. We're going to be scoring points or losing points, depending on where we are on here. Then there's going to be a fair. So at the end of each of the rounds, there is going to be a fair. Uh, where the fair is, it's always Tilatum in the round one. But rounds two, three and four, it was a randomly decided town. We've done all of the setup for you, so don't have to. And the points that you get from the fair, that's a random decision as well. Uh, that was randomly decided at the start of the game. So there's going to be a fair at the end of each round, and then there's cleanup. And that's it, and we do that four times. As I say, we're going to explain a bit more details as we go along, but before we jump in, I'm just going to show you my player board, which I think is this button here. Yeah, this is, this is a player board. So what you've got on your player board is you've got these buildings. These buildings are empty at the start of the game, apart from this one. So this building here has already got somebody in it. But one of the things you can do in the game is you can uh, find characters, when you get a character, they go here into your storehouse and then you spend an action to move them into one of the places of your, your buildings. Now, 
That has various advantages. When a building is full of people, it unlocks the house at the top. You can also put crests down at the bottom to complete the buildings, which gets you all sorts of other bonuses. But yeah, you're going to be putting people into these buildings, which is going to get you bonuses. You start the game with two pillars and two houses. You can only get more houses by filling a building full of people. Uh, and you fulfill contracts. And when you fulfill a contract, you put them on these spaces here, and that unlocks the pillars. So you're going to be building these houses and these pillars uh, over the course of the game. Everybody starts with one of each of these four resources, so one stone, one iron, one wool, and one food. But then you will start with a number of gold, depending on where you are in turn order. So Robert is the start player. Robert starts with one gold. Rob's got three gold. I start with five gold because I'm the third player. That's the setup here done. I also just want to mention a bit about the setup um, of the main board. So let's just put this preset on. Right, so the main board. The cathedrals, they are in a fixed location because this is the cathedral in this area of the world. Uh, they are stacked in victory point order. So whoever contributes to building the first part of that is going to get those points, then those points. But the cost to build each cathedral is on this construction tile. These were randomly chosen at the start of the game and one of them has an X. So the area on the board where it gets the X, you remove the cathedral tiles. You cannot build a cathedral there and you also cannot build the pillars there. Uh, we've also got these bonus tiles all over the board and you'll notice that we're not filling these spaces because we're playing a three player game today. So these are only for four players. Also, notice these orange buildings. Now the rulebook does not tell you to do this, but we're doing it because these are the spaces which are only used in a four player game. So we're using the fourth player color on there because it's easier for us to see which spots are not available. But as I said, that's not in the rulebook. That's just something we've chosen to do. All the players start here in Talatum. Uh, we all start with the house there. We also have a merchant piece and we have an architect. What else has been randomly chosen? Bonus tokens. Bonus tokens, yeah, so bonus tokens all over the board. Right, let's have a quick look at the top of the board. So this, as I mentioned, this is the first fair. These were decided randomly and the fair tiles were decided randomly. So we know that there is going to be a fair here at the end of round one, which is why we've got this marker here. In round two, the fair is going to be in Leipzig, which, which is why we've got a little token here. These are just visual reminders. Uh, that's where the fairs are going to be. And it's very important that as players, the first thing you do when you play this game is you need to look at what is going to get you points in the fairs. I'll explain this now, but it's not going to mean much to you if you don't know how to play the game. But if you know how to play the game and you're just watching for a playthrough, the fair, the first fair in the game is going to give us points for uh, full buildings. So, we, I, you know, I mentioned the buildings on your on the player board. Well, once they're full... You're going to get seven points for every full building. Now, that's in round one, so that's going to be quite tricky to do. In round two, we are going to get eight points, because you add these together, for each character that we have on floor two or for floor three. So these two fairs are all about characters. This one is you're going to get six points for each crest that you have on your player board. Uh, there are six different crests in the game. You can't have two of the same. And the final one for the fourth round of the game is three points for each pillar that you have on the board. Now, these these are already very different from the ones that we played with this afternoon. And I think a lot of your overall strategy of how you approach the game might be based on what's going to come out in the fairs. What else? Preset two, down here. We have a row of characters. There's a big stack of characters in the game. We've chosen these five at random. We also have a big stack of contracts in the game. You can tell that they're contracts because of what's printed on the back. Those were shuffled and five of them have been dealt there. We all start with here and we have six corruption tokens here. Now, as far as the, the King's track go, you're supposed to have a bonus tile here in rounds one, two and three. So what I've done is I've actually taken three tiles already uh, and that's the one that we're going to be using in uh, round one. That's not in the rule book. The rule book says to replenish it, but I just figured it was easier to have three tiles on here. And in the fourth round, it's four points instead. So. There we go. That's enough of an overview, I think. We're now going to dive in. Round one, phase one, is the dice phase. So in the bag, because we're a three-player game, we have five dice of each colour. There are five colours of dice in the game, so we've got 15 dice in the bag. And in a three-player game, we're going to take 11 of them. So we take 11 of them, throw one on the floor, and we give them a roll. You want to start putting them around the the board. That was a six. And the six is going on. 
and I'm going to keep doing it till there's only four left in the bag. It's four left in the bag. So what we're doing now is we are placing those dice around the action board. So this dial in the middle, this isn't fixed. This starts in a random position. But what Robert is doing is he's seeing the three there. So he's putting all of the dice with a value three. All of the dice with the value six. God, I do roll high. There we go, three ones as well. <laughs> uh, we've also got bonus tiles around here. These bonus tiles are all over the place. Um, but we've got a bonus tile in each of the sections here. So that's it. That's phase one done. Right, now what's going to happen in phase two, the first thing that happens in phase two of the game is we reveal one of the... In fact, what we should have done is put three there. Okay, so what we're now going to do at the start of each of Robert's uh, three of his action turns, we reveal this one. This tells us how far we all move back on this king's track. So this is representing corruption, and it's two. Because we're all on the same space, we just move all of our pieces back two spaces. That means right now we're all going to lose two points uh, at the end of this round. And a quick interesting fact about this track, because if you've played lots of games by Stefan Feld, you will know how this track works. It doesn't work like that. It works the opposite. The player at the bottom of the stack is the one who is furthest ahead. So right now, green is actually further ahead on this track uh, than the rest of the players. Right, so that's what happens at the start of each of Robert's turns. So now it's Robert's turn. Robert is going to have to choose one of those dice. So which of those dice do you want to choose? Mm. Yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of decision space in this game. For a relatively light rule set, I mean, it's not a light game, it's a medium weight game. But the decision space is quite large, hence the humming. Okay, I'm going so, to go for character stuff. Okay, so he's choosing um, this dice. Right. Can let me fill up some of these houses. Yeah. Now, the first thing that you do when you choose a dice, before taking it or doing anything with it, you can modify it. As shown here, you can spend two gold to increase or decrease the value of the dice. And you can do that as many times as you want. And you can wrap a six round to a one and vice versa. Now, we'll come on to that a bit more later on, because I know Robert's not going to do that on his first turn, because he's only got one gold. So, Robert is choosing the yellow four. Right, now what happens is, you may have noticed the colours of the dice. We have yellow, light grey, we have pink, we have uh, light, light blue, and we have dark grey. They match the colours of the resources in the game. So, by choosing a yellow four, the first thing that Robert does is gains four gold. So if you take four gold from the supply, so you gain resources equal to the number shown on the dice of a type based on the colour of the dice. So it was a yellow four, so Robert gains four gold. Right, then he puts the dice on his, tray, uh, on his player board there. There's space for three dice because you're going to get three actions. And then, because the bonus tile was still there, you may take this bonus tile. Now, at the start of the game, you generally want to take the bonus tile, but just be aware that you only have space on your player board for four bonus tiles. And if you cannot take one, if it's full, then you, you don't get it. So don't always assume that you should take a, a bonus tile, because if you're about to take a better one, then you might want to you might not do that. But basically, if you take a dice from a section and there is a bonus tile there, you may take the bonus tile. Right. That's two things. The next thing is Robert is now going to perform this action... But the number of action points that he has to perform that action is shown here. So by taking a die of value four, you get four resources, but you get three action points. If he'd have taken a six, he would have got six resources, but he would have only got one action point. So the numbers always add up to seven. So the action that Robert is going to do is this one, which is the character action. So if we just zoom down to the bottom of the board, the character action, there are three possible actions that you can do. Robert has three action points. The game actually comes with action point counters if you lose track, but we'll remember Robert's got three action points. So let's go through the three options that he's got. He could spend one of those character action points to refresh this display. If he does that, we're going to get rid of all of these to the discard pile and replace them all. That's one option. The second option is he could buy one of these character tiles. They cost one each. So he, if you wanted to, you've got three, you could buy three. Now, when you buy one, it is immediately replaced. So not at the end of his turn. As soon as he takes one, it's replaced. Any character tile that you buy goes into your storehouse. And again, you only have space for four tiles in your storehouse. So you've got to be very careful managing the space in your storehouse 
is a thing. The third possible action that you can do once you have got a character in your storehouse is you can transfer them into a building. And that costs either one, two or three character action points depending on the floor that you put them in. Um, and yeah, when a building is full, something happens. We'll explain that when it happens. So, Robert, you've got three character action points. What would you like to do? Right. Well, I'd like to take that. Okay. That so you person, spend one. one. That goes in your storehouse, and we replenish it straight away. You've got two character action points left. Are you going to take another one, or are you going to put that one? I could put that one in the you display put one in into on the, the yeah. bottom level. Because um, remember, the round one fair, and I'm saying remember, I'm not telling Robert remember, because he's clever. He's already known of this, but if you're watching this, remember, the fair for round one is seven points for each full building. So if Robert moves that character into a building that's only got space for one, that is a full building. Interesting. This one here is a full building. The one that we start with is already a full building. So okay, I'll we're all going to get some second points. action point. Yep. To put that one into one of these buildings. Okay, so you can put it anywhere. But are you going to? No, I'm going to put it on the ground level, which is one. So that costs you one point. action point. So uh, let's see. While you're doing that, I'm just going to explain how that works on my screen by pressing the right button, wrong button. <laughs> Sorry. This one. So whenever you transfer a character into a building, you immediately get the bonus in the top left of the character. So this one, for example, is gain one gold and one iron. And that is a bonus that you get when you move them from your storehouse into your building. So Robert, yours is gain one food. Yep. So you get one food. Now you've still got one character action point left. So I think I might want to get a new person. Yep. So, oh, this one's... Oh, that's this now full. This one becomes available. That's a full building. Yeah. So, so Robert now so has a full house. building, which means he gets that house. He just takes the house, and that is it. You've now got an extra house that you can place. Yeah. Um, so, I might want to get another. I think it's taking another one, isn't it? I might want to get another person. Mm. So, which should I go for? Um, He's got a bit of a beard, so he's probably suspicious. He's got a very big beard. Now that one, if, if I took that, it lets me move my architect and my... And your merchant, one, one space merchant. each. Yeah. Um, when you move on to the... Board, yeah, when you, take it. when you put it in the building. I think I'll take that one, because okay. he comes with some... Yep, some, you some take that one. He's going to give me some money soon. Soon. So, okay. put that there. And that is Robert's first turn. Now... As well as your action, which is, again, taking resources, possibly getting a bonus tile, and then spending your action points, there are a number of tasks that you can do in a game. Tasks are effectively free actions, and a lot of people, when they're playing this game, will call them free actions. We might call them free actions tonight accidentally, just because we've played a million games with free actions in. Officially, they're called tasks. Tasks are something you can do on your turn, after you've taken the dice, but at any time on your turn, before you're doing your actions, after, in the middle of your actions, and there's lots of different tasks that you can do. I'm not going to explain them all now, but we will explain them as we as we gradually do them. So Rob, your turn. Which dice would you okay. want to take? So I am going to take this die, but I'm going to activate the special ability. I'm going to pay two oh, he's gold doing it already. Okay. to turn this one into a into six, a two, or into a two. Which immediately then moves it to the level two slot. Yeah. So for all intents and purposes, this is now a level two die. Yes. They'll be in the level two slot. The money yeah. goes to the bank. And it's important that that change to the dice happens before you do anything. So that is going to change the number of resources that Rob's going to get. It's going to change the bonus tile that he can take. And it's going to change the action that he does. And remember, you can do that more than once. So if Rob really wanted to, he could spend another two gold, if he had it, to turn that two into a three. But yeah. So I now take you get two, two gold, gold back. which is the two gold back. You now get the bonus tile. Here. I take the bonus tile. If you wanted to, which yeah. you do. And you get five action points on the merchant action. Yeah. Okay, so the merchant action is a little easier to explain. Uh, there are two things that you can do, three things. three things that you can do with the merchant action. The first one is you can move your merchant. 
And all of our merchants all start off in Telatum. Um, and basically when you move your merchant, you can move it one space for each action point that you spend. Uh, and you have to go from one place to another along the roads. That's what you can do. So if Rob wanted to, he could spend all three action points. He could move three spaces. So you got five, five, five action points. So that's one thing you can do. The second thing you can do is you can establish a house. You can build a house, which is a trading post in the town where you are, as long as A, there is space, and B, you're not there already. So each player is only allowed to have one town in each place. And if you look carefully at the board, you will see there's only one space in Bruges for a town, for a trading post. There's only one space in Antwerp. There's only one space in Frank Frankfurt? Frankfurt, Frankfurt, unless it was a four-player game in which there'd be two. So that's your second option, is to establish a trading post. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just an action point. You put a thing down. The third option is... If your merchant is in a town with a bonus tile, you can simply take that bonus tile, and that costs one action point. So, Rob, you've got okay. five action five. points. Here we go. So one is a move from here, from Toledo to, to Paris. Cabby. My second action is to take the bonus tile in Paris. Yep, so that goes onto his player board. My third action is to move to Troyes. Toi. Toi. Yep, I call it Troyes, yeah. but I keep getting told Toi. off. Apparently I'm a... Serious gamer, I should be pronouncing it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my fourth action is to build a house there. Yeah. So just a quick note about houses. You'll notice this marker here. That means the fair in the third round of the game is going to happen here. In order to take part in the fair, you either need to have a house there or to have a merchant there. So by Rob already building a house here, that means he's going to take part in the fair in round three already. Whereas me and Robert, we there's no room for any houses now. So we're going to have to have our merchant there if we want to take part in the fair. Yep. That was four. One, two, three, four. We've got and one left. Action. I'm going to take He's going to take the bonus tile. The bonus tile. Now, the bonus tile that Rob's just taken is a crest. There are six different types of crests in the game. You are not allowed to take two crests of the same type at any time in the game. You are only allowed to have one crest of each type on your player board. So Rob's taken the... Red and yellow stripes chest. You can't take another one of them for the rest of the game. Okay. Then... That's your five... That's my five... Five action five, points. Five action points. As a task, Ooh. I then activate the bonus tile I just took. Yep. Which now gives me three more merchant points. Okay. So, let me just... Take that. So, this type of tile... I'll just show you it on my screen here. So, any type of tile with a very, very pale background is called a helper tile. And like all of the other tiles, when you take them off the board, you put them in your storehouse, as normal. But helper tiles, as a task, brackets, free action, you can basically use it to do what it says on it. Now, we're not going to explain every single one in the game. There is an appendix at the back of the rulebook that tells you what every single tile does. But the one that Rob's about to use basically gives him the merchant action, three action points, which is exactly the same as the action that he's just done. That tile gets removed from the game. So you've got three more action points and those action points are one to Strasbourg. Strasbourg two to take a different crest okay as a bonus yeah and three you're thinking about placing a house I'll drop another house down the He's reason put them house I down. want to get them out okay and that's the end of my turn and that's it you're done right okay so my go uh, let's have a look what I want to take I mean I do like resources I have to admit, I, I am a bit of a sucker for resources. But having only one action point if I choose one of these dice is not great. Um, now, what are we scoring points for? We're scoring points for characters. And the action that gives characters has no dice left. <laughs> That's why you took that one. You could spend money. I, change, I do have... Change these I do have five gold. But there's no bonus tile there. And I do like bonus tiles. Basically, I want free stuff, is what I'm saying. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this one. And I'm not going to change it. So I'm going to take that die. I get one stone. And then I'm going to do this action. Now, this is the easiest action in the game to explain. Oh, and I get the bonus tile as well. I have the bonus tile. So this action, very easy. I've got six action points on this action. And all this action does is move me six spaces up this track. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to get points at the end of the round based on where you are on this track. And whoever is the farthest ahead is going to take the bonus tile. So yeah, so that's what I've done. Do I have any tasks that I want to perform? I do not. So my go is done. So the start of Robert's turn, we flip over the next corruption tile. So we flip this over, it's got another minus two on it. So you two very corrupt, naughty boys. Me, I'm still a good boy. Right. Off you go. And that's why you start on ten points. Because <laughs> you can lose quite a lot. Uh, these tiles, by the way, these corruption tiles, these are all negative. The, there is one zero in there, or maybe two zeros, but there's no positives in there. It's all moving back on the track. I'd like to do more of this so I could pay. Wouldn't we all? I could pay to change one of those yeah. into a four, and then it would come to here. Mm -hmm. And then I could do that thing again. And I get three actions. So, um, one, two. Um, For those of you that tuned in last Friday to watch my Woodcraft playthrough, uh, we all commented that we do like a good action selection mechanism. And that's that's what this game is. This is a really simple but clever action selection mechanism with a lot of ways to manipulate the dice. Yeah, really good. Really good use of dice. Does it have a solo mode? Yes, it does have a solo mode. Designed by, I believe, Mr. David Turtsey. Um, yeah, and there's a whole set of components off camera that you can't see. Um, yeah, for the solo mode. Now, if I took one of these, I get loads of stuff, and I get two one dice action. are going to be left, aren't they? Yeah, because yep. there's eleven dice come out, and we're only going to take nine, so two dice will be left. Which one are you going to take? Mm, these ones seem quite good. I'll take. Um, yeah. I think I'll take this one, which gives me some food. Are you changing so it? Three. No, I think okay. I'm going to do. So you're going to stick stick I'm with the pink it. three. I don't want to do architecting very much. It's very different from the last game, isn't it? In the last game, we got r loads of points at the fairs for building pillars. So I'll pay everywhere. two money. I'll change you it are to changing it. a four, and it's still food. So it's changed to a number four. So I have four food. There you go. Number there was four. no bonus tile, got the four food. but you now do the character action with four points, four action points. Three action points. Three action points. I always get that wrong. So first I'll... Ooh, yeah, first I'll move this guy to here. That's one action point. That immediately gives me one money and one iron. And that can, that's a full house because there's only room for one character yep. in there so I get this so you get the house this house here becomes available haven't built these on the board yet um, that's just one I've got two more to do mm. um, so that one's new. So one thing that, well, again, while Robert's thinking, one thing that I need to say about the characters is, you notice the icon in the bottom right of the character. This is kind of the type of the character. It's also the same as the main artwork. Once you have um, put a particular type of character in a particular building of your house, then you can only put characters of that type in that building, and you cannot put characters of that type in any other building. So for example, if I was to take this one, this character here, and I was to put them in this house here, yeah? in this building here, that means the one that went there would have to be the same type as this one, and I could not put this type in any other of the buildings. So you're, you're limiting yourself to characters of one type in the same building. It's got the same, they've got the same face as they've well. Got the same, so yeah, the same artwork. So I think I'll take this this one, which okay. helps me do architect architecting in the stuff. long run. So that's the second. Yep. And then the third one, I could put that into here. You could. Oh, only on the ground floor, though. 
So yes. maybe I want to wait. Wait because of and, the um, second floor. So I want to try and get him in the second floor. Yeah. Ideally. So I could take another one. Um, yeah, I'll take that one. So that's three. Three character points spent. Any tasks that you want to do? I don't think there are any I can do, really. Oh, no. You could use the Jester tile as well, oh, yes, if you wanted to. Yes. Um, no, I won't. Right, Rob. Okay, so I'm going to take this action. Take six. So I'm taking the six, which is six stone. Six stone. Nom, nom, nom. Okay. Now this is the wild card action. Yeah, let's just um, let's just show this. Hat. Well, first of all, you get the bonus tile. Yep. But this jester's hat action basically means choose any of the other actions. So Rob's got one action point to do any of the other actions. Now, if this was more than one action point, all of those action points would have to be spent on the same action. So basically, with this, you just pick any of the other actions, and you spend that spend the action points that you've got. So. Which of those actions do you want to spend one action point on? Okay. Well, what I'm doing is before I actually spend the action, mm -hmm. I trigger my task. task. You're going to do a task. A token to gain a bonus action, action point first. on any action. Yes. So the bonus <laughs> so the, action the is. The Jester's hat be... action tile is choose any of the actions and get one action point. So you're going to basically do that twice. Yeah. So first action. The first action will be to take. This cheeky chap here. Yep. And put him in my reserve pile. Yep. Now I do my actual, actual action, one, which, which is, is to, to move him yep. and place him here. Okay. Which releases the building, and that gives me two immediate bonuses, which is to move both my merchant and your architect, and architect. one space. So my architect moves to Paris. Mm -hmm. Paris. And yeah, my Michael merchant. is saying, just clarifying, not because we've done anything wrong. But those are two separate actions, yep. each of which were one action point. Michael is saying you cannot say, oh, I'm going to do that action twice and add them together. No, I, could, I couldn't yeah. have used those two to do a to level two task action, yeah. but I could do it as two separate two things. Two separate things. Although I used them both for this, I didn't have to. You didn't to. have to. You could have done one action point with that and one action point with that. Yeah. Uh, so that was my bonus moves there and there. I then... Will activate this bonus ability, which is the architect task. action, which we haven't explained. So we're explaining a new action now, which is the architect action. It's very similar to the merchant action. There are three things you can do. One of them, move your architect in the same way as you moved your merchant. Two, take a bonus tile from the town where your architect is, if there is a bonus tile still there. The bonus tiles, by the way, on the main board do not refresh at any time in the game. And the third thing you can do with an architect is to place a pillar. Now, we've seen placing houses on the board. We haven't seen placing pillars yet, but each player starts the game with two pillars. Other pillars are available. Uh, and what you do is you place the pillars on the pillar spaces. But similar to the training posts, you can only place a pillar if there is space and only if you're not already there. So each player can only have one pillar in each uh, one. What do pillars do? Well, pillars are going to be worth points at the end of the game. It's a little bit like the houses. But also, pillars will allow you to construct the cathedrals, which we're going to see soon. Very shortly, I think. Very, very shortly. So I spend three. So three. Three bonus actions. Three action bonus action points with an architect. Let's me drop a pillar down in Paris. Oh, because your architect is already in Paris. Yep. And then okay. the second two will be to move him to here. Yeah. And then to here. Okay, so your architect is now in Bordeaux. Yep. He's, put, he's built a pillar there. And now he's moved to here. I then take a task. Okay, so spend. this is a big part of the game that we're seeing now. We are seeing a task which is actually constructing part of the cathedral. You can only do this if you have a pillar and you haven't already built a piece of that cathedral. Rob, well, nobody's built a piece of any cathedral yet. So I'm just going to zoom in really closely on this just so we can see it happening. It'll take me a while just to get this right okay so you can see what's happening here these tiles were dealt randomly at the start of the game okay so the cost to build a piece of this cathedral which i believe is notre dame is going to cost four stone it gets seven points plus the points printed on there and then what's going to happen is rob's going to take this he's going to get it and you can see the next piece is going to be worth fewer points 
So by spending four stone, Robbie's going to gain ten points, and that gets removed. So the five goes in, I get one change, Notre Dame comes to me, and I get a whole ten points. Ten points. Now, Rob can no longer build a piece of Notre Dame, because he's already built a piece. So yeah, that's that's how that works. In the last game that we played this afternoon, building pieces of Cathedral was worth a huge amount of points. However, in our game, it isn't. So yeah, the fairs are basically the biggest thing which is going to change uh, change what scores you points in this game. But that is a task. It's very important to remember that building a piece of the Cathedral like that is a task. It is a free action. It isn't. It doesn't cost you an actual action point to use, but you have to have a pillar in that location. All done? Right, me. Well, I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to take... I'm going to take this. I'm going to spend two gold to turn the three into a four. Um, and it's going to go here. And then I'm going to get four iron. One, two, three, four. And I'm going to spend four character points. So, character points that I'm going to spend are as follows. Take, take, place, place. That's three completed buildings. It's three action points, not four. Take, place, take. Oh, I've got three. Yes. Yeah, but it's four resources, ah, three action But points. I'm going to spend my action tile to give me four action points. Thank you. Which is take, place, take, place. Um, so, now, where's my merchant? Still in Toilaton. Where do I want the merchant to go? Yeah, I think I'm going to take this one. Where's the second fair? Likes it. Way over there. Miles away. Way over there. And what do we get for that fair? Uh, see, I could spend all of my time going over there, but it, I, I don't know whether it's great. It seems a long way away. I mean, you've already built that there. Oh, it's tricky, isn't it? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one. So that's one of my character points used. Then I am going to place that one in here, which cost one. That unlocks the building. That gets me to move my merchant two spaces. So I am going to go... Oh, there's London as well. London's quite nice. But once you go to London, you then have to come back. Oh, well, there is a, there is a teleport, isn't there? Hmm. What's that? Should we stand for? No, we're going to go this way. So we'll go one, two. Uh, right, so that's two character points spent. So I now can't take another one of those two, but I could take this one. Yeah, let's take that one. So I'm going to take that one for another character point, and I'm going to place it in there, which moves me up on that track which unlocks another house. Right. I need to take the dice. Um, tasks. I have no tasks. So, Robert, third and final action of round one. We reveal the tile. It is minus one. So you two both move down to there. I move to there. You're on minus oh, seven points. is going really downhill. Naughty boys. Naughty boys. Yes, there is a teleport option. We, we'll come to that when we talk about placing the crests. So I think I want to do this. I am sure it's not thematically a teleport. That's going to give me some wool. That's wool, isn't it? Yeah, that because that's the dark. That's going to give me some wool because the, it's the light grey. Yeah, light grey is wool. Architect stuff, and I get a bonus yeah. tile. Yes, teleport them. Very good, Michael. So yes, I'll take this one. Yeah, that gives me three wool, and you get the bonus tile if you want it. I would like it, please. Okay. So I've got some wool. My um, my storehouse is, is full. full. So I could get a bit yeah a bit stuck if I don't make a bit of room in my because it might deny me certain options later. Yeah. But I think I can. So anyway, I can now four action points on the architect action. So that's what I was really hoping to do. So let's go one, two, three, 
and then the fourth, I'm going to take a bonus yep. tile from that city. Except you've no space for it. Oh. So... Um, Did you want to use some of your other I tiles? Use, yeah. Can I use can this use, one yeah, in, in the meantime? In the middle, yeah. To do... So one action point if I use on that any to action. Do, um, uh, and if you do the one action we haven't explained yet... I will explain it. What is this the one that we haven't, we haven't explained? explained the contract action yet? Um, I think I'll move my move my merchant because I want to okay. try and get near to. So that Robert thing. used a helper tile, which gave him one action point in any action, in the middle of doing another action, which is why sometimes the action point counters are handy. But you've so got now, one architect action point left. Right. So now I can take Which this because I've got room that. for it in yeah. my storehouse. Okay. Okay, and now... Um, are you going to use a crest? I will do a, if you uh, are, a task. Can you pass me the crest? And I'll just show it you on my player board. So here's what Robert's going to do. Let's pretend I have a crest. So one of the, again, tasks that you can do in the game, brackets, free action, is you can pay food to move that chest... So one of these spaces down here, the food cost is shown on here and what that does is it moves the chest and you can move it to any of them but doing it does two things. First of all, you get the ability printed on the space uh, and this is the teleport option. So you can move your merchant to any, uh, any town. This is move your architect to any town. The other ones, well, these are obvious. But the second thing that it does, if you do it in a building which is already full, then that completes the building. So terminology here is important. When when it is full of characters, the building is full, but it is only completed when there is a chest in it. Now you can put the chest here, sorry, not the chest, crest. the crest. You can put the crest there if you want to. So you don't have to put the crest as the last thing. It could go there. Uh, that doesn't fill the building. In fact, that, doesn't, that does nothing apart from get you the bonus of the space. But once the characters are there, the building is then full. And what happens when a building is full is you get to unlock these bonus action tokens based on the icon in the bottom right. So, for example, if I put this crest here, what that does is that completes this building. And because this building only has one character in it, I'm going to take my plus one action point tile, which is this one. This is a really cool part of the game. You look at the icon on the characters and remember all of the characters within a building must be the same. And that is the action which gets better. So this would be a plus one. I would put this plus one on this action. And that means every time I do that action in the game, I get an extra one action point. So that's that's how those work. So, Robert, there you go. Have your crest back. Is that what you're... That's quite similar to what I was going to do, Paul. <laughs> yes, might, that's though. quite similar. So I want to go on that one. So to cover up that one... So you spend three food. It's a task. I spend three food. And you get any two resources... Put that there. Um, I'll have some have some more food. Okay. And that building is now complete. So you take one of your plus one Ooh. action tiles, and it's the character action. So it goes here. Yep. So every time Robert performs this action from now on, he's going to get an extra action. But now that's every time you perform it. With a dice. With a dice. Is that right? Yes. If you have... This is a thing which lets you perform perform an action. Yeah. Uh, it's a helper. And you, Are we saying you don't get the bonus? I can't remember. I Mike, don't think... If Michael's in the chat, can you remind helpers. us, do you get the bonus for this, even if you use a helper tile? I was pretty sure it was just taking it on the die. I, I think it's just taking it on the die, because the iconography here shows this. Michael will confirm in the chat. The, he says only dice. Yes, thank you. Round. I thought so. So if you use a tile that gives you action points, this doesn't count. Only when you take the dice. But I would not like to use this helper tile now as a task. To do three contract points. Yes. So contracting is the only action that we haven't explained yet. And there are two options. Your first option is to take a contract tile. Now, there are two differences between taking a contract tile and taking a character tile. The first one is the cost increases. So this one is cheap, this one is really expensive. 
The second difference is that they do not replenish immediately. They only replenish at the end of your turn. So if you're spending a whole bunch of contract points, you basically take the tiles that you want to take, and then at the end of your turn, they will slide to the right, and then you will replenish from the right-hand side. Okay, so that's the first option, is spending contract points to take these tiles. Now notice, these are contracts, this is a crest. The reason why it's a contract tile is because of the back of the tile, okay? But all of these tiles are mixed up and they're placed randomly and some of the contract tiles are actually crests. These are actually contracts. Right, your second option is this. This is go to the market and do an exchange. Every contract action point that you spend here will allow you to change one resource into another resource. But the first time that you use this in a turn, you get an extra bonus one resource. So yeah, Robert, you've got three contract action points. What would you like to take? I've just changed my mind okay. because I wanted this. <laughs> you can't take it. I wanted this. I can't take it. You can't that take it because you've already have got that. The, the crest from yeah. that family in on my board. Yeah. So you've already got the favour of that family. Yeah. So you're not going to do the action. You're going to take it back. I'll take it back. Okay. Yeah. So we explained it, but we're not actually going to do it. Right. Okay. So I think that's me done. Right. Rob. Okay. So I am going to take this action. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping it as a one. Keeping it as a one. So, so you get, get one gold, gold and you move six spaces up on here. Yep. Because that two, minus seven was looking pretty nasty. Six. Yeah, that's effectively gained you eight points. And it's also going to change the flow of the game. Turn up. Turn order, yes. But you're all done? I'm all done. Well, well what should I take then? <laughs> well, you've got three choices. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I have two choices, technically. <laughs> Giving me fake choices. Um, do I want six wool, or do I want six iron, or no? I mean, I could spend the two gold. I could change it to a five, and that would get me this bonus tile. Now that's another crest, isn't it? And it would get me two contract points, which would actually allow me. I could do that. We could actually have fulfilling a contract. Is it worth it? I think it is. I think it is. So I am going to spend two gold. I'm going to take this six wool and I'm going to turn it into five wool. So I take five wool. Um, I get the bonus tile. Thank you. Right. So, oh, actually, we're going to do a lot of things here, I think. Yeah. Right. So contract actions. I've got two contract points. The first contract point I'm going to do is I'm going to take this contract here. So what I do is I take this contract and put it into my storehouse. Okay. The second thing I'm going to spend is on here and I am going to spend one iron and I am going to get one thing and I get a bonus resource. So I'm going to convert that iron into a food and then I'm actually going to get another food as well. It, it could have been anything, but I'm going to get a food as a bonus resource. Right, now, another task. There is a lot of tasks that you can do in this game. And the task that I'm about to show you is completing a contract. It's really simple. You basically spend whatever's printed on the tile. And you can see that it's in red. Red means you have to pay it. And you get the points printed on it. You then move the contract tile to the leftmost contract space. If there was points on the space, you get those points. And if there was a pillar, you unlock that pillar. So I'm going to spend... That bag means any resource, so I'm actually going to spend. Um, I'm going to spend two wool, three more, and I'm going to spend two iron, uh, and then that contract tile moves to there. So that unlocks the pillar. That moves to there, and I get five points. Yeah, five, five points, and that is one contract that I have fulfilled. And that was a task, and I think that is me. Oh no, now I could do the same as what Robert did. I could spend my three food to go on here to complete that building. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna spend three food. I'm gonna place this on here. That gets me two resources. I am gonna take, hmm. I don't know what to take. I'm going to take two wool, shouldn't have spent all the wool, um, and I get my plus one action token, 
on the merchant space. Done. Okay, we're all finished. That's the action phase for round one done. It will go a lot quicker than this because we have spent this part of the video explaining what all of the actions do. So what we're now going to do is we're going to do the king strike. So this is the next thing that we do. First of all, this determines the new player order uh, for the next round. So if we just zoom up a bit, this is the player order here. So player order is changed. That is now the player order for this next round. Then what happens is we gain points based on where we are. So I'm going to get two points. Blue is going to score one point, And Naughty Robert is Ooh. going to lose seven points. Now, the next bit, this is interesting. Anybody who's below zero moves back to zero. But anybody who's positive stays where they are. So effectively, your sins have been forgiven for now. And I'm quite near to the zero. And you so are quite I near to the zero. You can't go below you can't zero. Go below zero. Um, so that's the king's... So that's phase four. So phase four is really simple. And now we have phase five. Phase five, we have our first fair. Oh, sorry, yes. The player who is furthest ahead on this track. Yeah, thank you. I did forget that. So the player who was furthest ahead on this track gets this bonus token. There we go. Right, next. Phase five is the fair. So in order to be eligible to score in the fair, you have to either have your merchant present in the town where the fair is or have a trading post there. All players start with a trading post in Telatum, which is where the first fair always is. So we are all eligible for this fair. It is seven points per full building. Now, I'm going to assume, and Michael will correct me if I'm wrong, that the building that we all start with, which, as you can see, has a person in it, is filled. So I've actually got three filled buildings, and that's going to get me 21 points. Robert, you're the same. I've got three. Yep. Rob, you've got two. Michael says yes. Mm -hmm. So 21 points to me and Robert. 38. Um, and 14 points to Blue. 35. Right. And then that fair is done. And that is the end of the first round of the game. So now we need to do cleanup and preparation for the next round. Robert, do you want to collect all of the dice? Right. So all of the dice get collected. We are going to replenish the bonus tiles on the action wheel. So any any bonus tiles that were here from last round, they stay. But what we're going to do is we're just going to deal new ones here. We also reveal the next bonus tile for here. We also shuffle the corruption markers. Oh, this should have slid down. Forgot to do that. New contract. Oh, it's a big one. Um, the bonus tiles on the board do not replenish. So any bonus tiles that were taken from the board they stay empty. Anything else we need to replenish? No, I think we're good. Did we turn the wheel? Oh, we turn oh, the wheel. Yes. I forgot that. Thank you. At the end of each round, you turn the wheel one space clockwise. Oh, and three ones. All right, okay, so there is the action wheel. Let's just show you that a bit closer. Um, right, so that's phase one done. Phase two, it's me. I'm first. So we have to reveal the first corruption token, which is zero. So we don't move. Right. So if I choose this action, I get to do it with one extra action point. And that's that. That's quite nice. That's six movement points for my merchant and three points for a character. That three points for a character could get me somebody on level... Then again, it's Leipzig. Am I going to be able to get to Leipzig? Where is Leipzig? Well, of course I am. I've got six movement points. That seems like an obvious move. In fact, for me, it's seven. Okay, we're going to do it. We're, we're totally doing it. So I am going to choose... doesn't really matter... Let's take, let's take the one stone. So I'm going to take this and get the bonus tile. I'm going to put it there and I get one stone. But I get seven action points for my merchant. Right, I'm going to work back. <laughs> Build a house in Leipzig. Move from Hamburg to Leipzig. Take the bonus tile in Leipzig. Move from random unknown town to Hamburg. 
move from Antwerp to Unknown Town. That's five. How many have I got? Seven. So I can do two more things on the way. There's another combo as well. There's building a town in Hamburg. There is an icon on there, which means I can activate one of my buildings. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, gosh, gosh. Now, buildings multiplied by pillars is worth points at the end of the game. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of choices in this, isn't there? Um, <laughs> how many have I got? I got four houses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. I've, I've worked out what my seven actions are going to be. But before I do any of those seven actions, I'm going to use this tile to get three character point actions. And I'm going to... So I can't take that one because I've already got... I can't take those... Oh, sorry, it's these two. So I'm going to take this one. Goes into there. That costs me one. That gets replenished straight away. And then I'm going to spend another two to put that guy here. Which gets me two wool. Okay, so it's cost me two character action points to put it there. That was from my tile. I haven't spent any of my seven actual action points yet. So... Let's do it. So, one, two, three to take the bonus tile, four to put a house on there, which allows me, that icon there, if you can see it, you probably can't see it, but there's an, there's an icon there, which basically means I can activate one of my buildings uh, and choose any of the things in there. And I'm gonna activate the one that gives me another two wool. Um, and then I move down to Leipzig, I place another building in Leipzig, and I take the bonus tile, which I then immediately use to get four points. So I think that was my seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right. Very nice. Wow. Now, I've still got some tasks I could do, but I think I'm all right. <laughs> I, think I've, I think I've spent long enough on that turn. Your go. No, it's not. No. Mind it's your go. We're going counterclockwise yeah. now. Order has been changed. Yeah. Right. I'm going to spend two gold to make this one a two, which moves it to the two slots. Mm -hmm. You get two food. I then take two food. You get that bonus tile. Bonus tile. And then I get to do five. Five architect, architect actions. actions. So arch architect action one is to put that there. A pillar where your architect yep. already is. Okay, I immediately pause to do a task, which is to spend two stone. Two stone to get eight okay. points to build the first piece of the cathedral. Yep, which puts me up to 43. Okay, second, so second of my five architect points is to move south to Toulouse. Toulouse. Third is to take the three... You have two architect points left. I immediately spend it to get three points on the track. One, two, three. I then take the next token. One architect point left. I immediately spend it to gain two more on the track. And then move to Arles. Arles. Okay. Um, so this is the important thing with the task, is that you can do them in the middle of spending action points, as you've just seen. Then I will then spend three food. To move one of my crests. Oh, you're doing a crest thing. Yeah. Down to here. Take two food back, which then allows me to put one of my plus one markers. Yeah. Which action are you going to improve? This one here. That one. Okay. All done. And I'm done. You built two bits of cathedral already. Yep. Robert. Okay. Choose a die. Any die. Yeah. That one is that one is iron. That one is that one wool. is wool. I've already got some wool. Um, I got lots of wool. <laughs> I think I'll, that's gold. Gold is useful. I found it helpful in the gold last is game. useful. And food is useful, but I've got a reasonable amount of food. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I'll take one of these. Are you not changing it? No, I'm so going to do the get, Joker thing. You get five gold. Oh, is that right? I want to. Mm, not sure. Because I want to do the character action. Mm -hmm. If I do the character action with this. You'd get two action get points. That. You'd get the crest and you'd get two action points. So. Um, is that enough? Yeah, it might be enough. Um, yeah, I think it might be enough. So I'll take take this. Yep. That gets me five gold. Five gold. You get the bonus tile. And you choose any of the actions, and you've got two action points. And you've also got lots yeah, of. So uh, gonna you're going to do that. One. So you've got, you've got two, two character. action points on characters. So I can put one of these into level, level two. two. Yep. Um, let's go. Uh, I'll put this one at level two okay. over here. And the immediate bonus is your merchant and your architect can move one space each. So let's move the merchant here. Yeah. Antwerp. And your architect is currently hanging out in Bordeaux. So. It's optional, you don't have to. Yeah, maybe I'll just. Leave him there. Leave him there. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll leave him there. Right. So that was, that was that, that was that, that was that. You could do a task you could to do get a task. this down onto the board. Yep. That might be a nice thing to do. So I've got some food here. The ability of that um, is you teleport your one, architect two, to any three. town. Uh, three. That one there, which would improve that action. So, mm. it does give your architect a free, free teleport yeah, as well. My architect would like to be. I don't know. Um, yeah, could probably find somewhere good to go to. So let's spend four four food, food to put it onto this one. Yep. Yeah. And then the architect and can teleport. Should we just to, throw it in the air and see where it lands? Um, <laughs> Friends is nice. Milan is nice. Um, I mean, that's 15 points, building the first piece of the cathedral there. That's 21 points. Wow. It's cost more stone. It costs a lot of stone. very much stone. So let's go... It's also at the end of a road, so it's better yeah. to teleport there and move away, I guess. Yeah. I go to Friends because it, it doesn't doesn't need as much stone. Okay. So that's my task done. That's, that's a task uh, done. So yeah. that means that I, this is now a completed building. So you get a plus one I'm counter one on these onto this action. The, right. I think that's me done. Well done. Right. So back to me. Yeah. Flip over another corruption tile. It is minus two. Right. Okay. So let's have a look at what we've got. I mean, I've got lots of wool, and there's a nice contract there to get wool. So I'm kind of leaning towards taking contracts. Um, don't really want to move my merchants around anymore. Although, although I'm looking at that house in Vienna. It's seven points. <laughs> it's quite nice. It is quite nice, isn't it? Um... So I'm looking at potentially the contract action because there's a bonus there. And I don't need any more wool. He says he doesn't need any more wool. These contracts. Wool and iron tend to be for fulfilling contracts. Um, so I, I am actually going to take this. I'm going to take the four. I'm not going to change it. And I'm going to take another four wool. And I'm going to get the bonus tile. And I've got three action points to spend on taking contracts. So, I am going to take this one, because it cost one, so I have two points left. I am then immediately going to spend seven wool 
to complete that contract, which gets me 12 points. So just why, just a quick reminder as to why it gets me 12. I get 11 for that, but I'm placing it on this space here. So I get an extra one. So, so I get the 11 more, plus the one. Okay, so that's unlocked that pillar. And that's a free, that's a task that I can do on my turn. So I've still got two action points left, but it, as well as it getting me 11 points, it moves my merchant. So my merchant moves to Prague. Still got two points left. Contracts are not worth anything in this game, are they? For the fairs. No. But I seem to be doing a lot of them. <laughs> um, so I've got two points left. Do I do this? Or do I do this? I think I might do this one. I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to spend my remaining two and I'm going to take that and put it there. And then I'm going to spend five wool. I'm, I'm totally doing it. I'm going to complete another contract. So that gets me nine points. Uh, oh, wool merchant. 63. Well, yeah, it's good while it lasts. Got all these pillars. I need to do something with these pillars. Right. I don't have any contract action points left. I spent my three. So now these shuffle down. And now we replenish. All of these tiles are off camera, by the way. I'm not just magicking them out of my sleeve. Um, do I want to do any other tasks? Now that's interesting. Hmm. I think I do. So I'm going to use this tile here to give me two action points, which I can use to move my merchant. I will use one of them to go to Vienna. And I will use the other one to place that there, which gets me an immediate seven points. I think we should just call the game there. I think that's. that's, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing well for the contracts, but I think I've just, I've just, yeah. We shall see. I don't think it's going to last long. I don't know what that's doing. Right. Are you done, Apple? I think so. I think I've done quite enough. Yeah. So I'm going to spend two gold to again change the value of a die. Move this one to here. Mm -hmm. Am I doing so, it correctly? I think I am. Taking that gets me three food. Uh, green player has one more action point for the bonus tile. We, 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 we might have missed something earlier on. Thank you very much, Sergio. Which bonus tile? I think you did the character action. Mm -hmm. Or did you do the contract action? I'm not sure. There's a message in the chat from earlier that we forgot. You you missed one action point, oh. but I'm not sure which one it was. Right. So I'm taking this action and I get four plus one is five. Yep. So action one will be to take this young lady here. Yep. And it gets replaced. Move to here. Second action is to move her straight to here. Level one. Which gets me three VPs. Yep, so that's two of your five used. You've got three left. Yep, and it'll be to take this one here. You've got two left. And move her straight to here. You have zero left. Yep, which gets me a wool. And the building is full. Yep, which means you unlock the house. Unlock the house. And... Dum -dum 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 -dum. You've got the food. I'm then going to spend... Uh, Green did the character through the Joker and did not get the bonus, which so does apply. Maybe I could put that lady in level 3 Just put instead it in level of three. level 2. Yeah, thank you. I've used, thank you. Used one more. So what we're saying is when you use the Joker to perform an action, if you've got a bonus thing on that action, that counts. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm then going to spend my task to gain two more. Two more character points. Yep. And it's going to be to take... This one here. Yep. For one, and place him here for two. two which gets you three somethings, three, three iron. Three, no, three activations on this track. Oh, right. Three contract activations. Yep. Wow. Which will be to take these two. Yeah. Okay. And they slide down.
Big turn. Yes. Are you doing any placing of crests? I sort of want to. I'm going to. Yes, I'm now going to spend one, two, three, four, five food to drop this crest here, giving me plus two to this action. No, right, this is a plus two because there are two people in that building. And teleporting myself to here. Yeah. That's where I was going to go. Boom. Couldn't quite get there. All done? All done. Robert. Yeah, the alarm's not working, but I am getting this vibrating in the bottom of my back. Mm. <laughs> We're trying to set up some kind of alarm system so that if I make a mistake during the game, people can alert me. And I think getting electrodes attached to a sensitive part of my body uh, might might be the way forward. I think it's time to go up the king track. So do I want do I want some iron or some wool? I mean, when you say go up the king track, you mean one space. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Honestly, yeah. I'm not uh, as... Yeah. So, but, but, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, the key thing in this game is the difference between mm. the number of resources you get and the number of actions you get. And always, Basically, the yeah. bigger the value on the die, the weaker the action. Yeah. Right. But you need the resources to be able to do the action. The so action. it's a really nice... It's such a simple system. Basically, I want that crest, so I might change this one to a six with some money mm -hmm. to go there to get that crest. There is another thing that you can do at, when it's your turn. One of the tasks we haven't explained. You can buy any resource that you need for two gold. So yeah, you could, that's that's a thing that you can permanently do, is go shopping, spend two gold, and buy a resource. So I will spend two money to change that five to a six, which means it's there. Right. Then, then you get six food. Six food, please. You take the crest, and you Lovely. move one space up on the king's track. Not as much rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm still last player. You all done? Mm -hmm. um, well, maybe I could use that to put something... You maybe could? I could put that on the board now. Um, or... Might be a good idea. Um, so... Yeah, if I go here, I can put one of these houses in any city yeah anywhere. so let's just show you so, my my player board so the left hand space here where nice you can place a crest it's really powerful it's six food but it allows you to place a house on any space in the on the board you don't have to be there to do it and this one is place a pillar in any pillar space on the board following normal rules except you don't have to be there but they are expensive very expensive So yeah, I'll use. I'll put it there. That cost me six food. Six food. It put a house. Put a house anywhere you want. In any unoccupied. Venice by any chance? Uh, I mean, that still leaves place for space for Rob to put one. That's good because it's eight points. It's eight points. But I wanted to go somewhere for a fair. So if I went, which, if I which went is here, oh, I can't. Leipzig's full, Twice is full, there. and Verona, Verona. There's only one space there. Yeah, there's only one space in the room. It's four turns away. Um, oh, very last turn in the game. So. Yeah. Put one in Verona. So that's covered. I spent the food. And I could do this, but I'm not sure I want any of those. Well, the nice thing about contracts is they do get you a pillar when you complete the contract. So, five more. I've got more. Yeah, architecting. All of the bonus tiles have gone again. Um, no, I won't now. That's me done. Okay. So, I think I've messed this up. Because I was hoping to use this and exchange it for gold. But you can't use these until you've chosen a dice. Yeah, so these are not any time. They're only on your turn when you're taking the actions. Because what I wanted to do is use them for gold, 
and then use two gold to change that into a three so that I could do four character points. That's what I wanted to do. But I can't, so I won't. Instead, I've got potentially six movements, or I've got potentially two, I've got potentially five architecture movements. We kind of need to do that because I've got all these pillars. So we're going to do that. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take two stone, and then I've got five architecture points to spend. Now then, where's the really good stuff? Prague. Or where was the where was the really good one? That's the most expensive. Twenty one for six stone. Six stone, but it's twenty one points. But I'm nowhere near. Problem is, is there any cathedrals on the way? Coln. It's only nine points. Three stone for nine points. Is three stone for nine points all right? Hmm. Four stone for fifteen sounds nicer. But I've only got five. And there's bonus tiles as well. I could pick up bonus tiles on the way. Um, London. What's well, London? That's three for eleven. And there's lots of bonus tiles. We're totally going to London. Right, so I've got five. I go one, two, three, four to place a pillar. Uh, and then five will be... Oh, there's a contract. I like contracts, don't I? Or do I take the two golden two points? I'll take the two golden two points, which I'll use straight away to get two points and two gold. Right, I'm then going to do a task. I am going to spend three stone because I have a pillar in London. I'll take that and I get 11 points. Done, I think. King track. What are people saying about the king track? You're saying I should have gone up the king track. Yes, king track. Minus two, thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I th I don't think I'm doing any... No, I think I'm good. Yep. Smashing. So... Your last turn for round two. This one. So that's one steel. One iron. And you've got eight movement points, or eight, eight action so points to use. One. You yeah. usually cash it in for free. Two to place a house. Two to place a house. For eight points. PC, so that's 51. So that was yeah. two. Yep. You've got six left. Yep. Just calculating something. And again, the game does come with action point counters, so you don't have to use your fingers. I think I'm actually going to spend this plus one to give me additional action at the start. So I've got okay. seven. You've got seven. Then we're going to go... That's your house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> one, one, two, two three, three four. four. You've got three left. Five. You have two left. Six. You have one left. Seven. You have zero left. Any other tasks that you want to perform? Mm. I think you're done, aren't you? I just looking I'm around. Yeah. Done, yeah. Okay, Robert, your last turn for round two. Yeah, dice pips to count action points, but then I'm not using my fingers. Why aren't I using my fingers? If anybody has more than 10 action points, I'm taking my socks off. Just so you know. No problem. And nobody wants that. <laughs> By the way, if we have any live viewers from Belgium, or if you're watching this video back, uh, have you been to Tilt? If that's how you pronounce it. It's probably not how you pronounce it. But apparently it still exists. It is a place. 
And I don't know if there was any historical significance with the town or the designers just went, we need to find somewhere beginning with a T. <laughs> Okay. I want to do this action, so I'll have to change one of these dice. Mm -hmm. So, do I want more wool or iron? I think I probably want some iron. So, that's the blue. So, I'll pay two gold to turn it into a one and get one iron. Yeah. But now you have. Six merchant action points. So use one to pick this up. Oh, I pronounced it fine. Excellent. It's good to know. Two is building a house. So that's one, two, you've got four left. Three, four. Can't build a house there. No. Nope. Five, yep. and I'll stop there. Okay. And your last action point? Take some photos, see yeah, some sights. Yeah, there's a nice cathedral. Oh no, that's that's, well, that's, that's You can't quite see the cathedral in Cologne. It's just over the next hill. <laughs> right, we're all done. So, could I? I could do this, but well, maybe I want to. Do you want to take a contract? A contract. So I've got I've got some wool. Uh, they all need quite a lot of iron. Yeah. Um, you can see some of these contracts, as well as getting points, also get you something else on that. And this one is, this is a big one. So I won't use that. Yet. Okay, right. So we're done. So we do the king's track. So Rob, you are ahead on the king's track. So you're going to be the first player. Yep. Um, you also get this bonus tile. There you go. I'm going to reveal this now, in case I forget. Um, I can you gain two, two points. I lose two points. Uh, Robert, loses three. Robert loses three points. Then uh, I'm ahead of you, so I go there, then that goes there. It's important that you preserve the turn order when you're adjusting the counters on there. That's the King's Track done. We now have a fair in Leipzig, and I believe all of us are eligible. Yep. Because I've got a, a trading post there, and you two are physically there. So we can all get eight points for each of our characters, which is on level 2 or level 3. I only have one character on level we'll 2. We we'll only have one character on level 2, so everyone gets 8 points. Yep. That's a really interesting one to come out on the second round. Yep. If that had come out in round 1, I don't think any of us would have scored any points for it at all. Right, we do clean up. So, I'm going to remember, we rotate it one space. Robert, if you wouldn't mind doing the dice, right. I will do some bonus counters. So three, four, five, six. Um, that's been done. That's been done. Corruption tiles are going back in. Right, round three. Let's just have a look at the action wheel. That's the action wheel for this round. Right, okay, off we go into actions. So the first corruption tile is minus two. So there you go, done. Okay, the order is back to clockwise. The order is back to clockwise, starting with Rob. Starting with me. Now, what are we scoring for the next fair? The next fair is number of crests. Number of crests. And remember, every crest that you have on your board has to be different. Yep. And you have to be here in yes. Trois to which is and which is the moment is just Rob. Do the crests count even if they're only in your I understood that they did. And, and that's only because you've told like, us that they did. It seemed like the the way it was worded in the So the rule book says the online one that I read. Um fairs. It says, score victory points for each crest tile on your player board. There you go. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it doesn't matter where it is on your player board, okay. you're going to score for it. Right. Okay. So, 
Now, frustratingly, I've got already got four markers here. Yeah, so, don't so get you the fell into the trap. Yeah. So this is very important. Is I mentioned that these uh, helper t things, you can only use them after you've taken the die. So Rob has got four, which means he, he, he can't take a bonus die. I can't use this to do a bonus action free die before that. I die. Yeah. So I'm going to take this one here because it's a little weak one. That's four steel. Four iron. Four iron. I'm going to... And yeah. you get to do three action points on any of the other actions. Yeah. Before I do uh, anything else... Where's the crests? There's no crests here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hang on a minute. There's no crests. Yeah, before I do anything else... <laughs> I had to get all those things. They are. There were loads in the last. Oh, these, they're here. These yeah. nobles are. Um, I'm spending very two reticent. gold to buy a, a buy another iron. Two gold to buy an iron so from the shop. Seven iron to complete this. Okay. So that gives you eleven VPs. Eleven VP. Seventy-two. And one jump up on the king track. Pop. And that goes there and frees up that. Okay. I then take another bonus action of triggering this one to take two, two bonus architecture points. The first one is to take the other rare crest oh, there. Yeah. Which comes to me. And then I will move him one step that way. Just in case. Unknown but town. I'm gonna I'm gonna write names on these. <laughs> I'm gonna name them. Okay, so that is now I do my actual turn. You haven't actually done your yeah. actual thing yet. Have I have so. three points. So three points on any action you want to. Just checking which ones I have and haven't taken. So you got four different shields, four different crests. Nice. Yeah. Did pink disappear from the king strike? There you go. We're both there. Except I do need to stack them, so he's there. Don't worry. I am there. Uh, three. Oh, I think I'm next time. I can be starting to think about my turn. I might just give up on this fair this turn. Although it's six points. Potentially 12. Hmm. Maybe not. Sorry. Bear with me, folks. My brain's just spinning up. I need my three action points, which are going to be... I could even make it five if I wanted to spend those. Which I think I will. I'm going to make it a five, rather than a three. So yes. which action do you do? And I'm going to do this one, so I'm actually going to get six. So you've got six, six action points to spend. Yep. Here. On the character action. So, first things first, I'm going to take this one. Yep, for one. one. You've got five left. Yep, bring her out here for two. Four left. You get two we'll points. Get two points. Um, so, you can't take him in my own. I'm going to do a reset for my third. Okay, so we've not seen this before, but I did mention it at the start. If he spends one character point, all of these get discarded. And we get five new ones. No, she's upside down. She likes being upside down. I'll take this one for my fourth. Yep. One, two, three, three, four. Got one left. Five, oh, no, no. It's going to be a different time. Yeah, yep. Five, which gives me two stone. Mm -hmm. um, How many did you have? Six. You had six, didn't you? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, yep. Yeah. Six. Okay. Wow, right. My go. Uh, nope. Uh, no, I go. It's oh, we're going clockwise again. We are going clockwise. So, I, I'm trying to work out whether I want to bother with the fair, because I think it might be tricky to get to the fair from where I am. It's one, two, three, four, it's five movement away, and when you do this action, I'm only going to get two movement points. So, do I just forget about it? Or do I take a crest 
and then f somehow get five food, which is going to be tricky based on the dice that's, that you've rolled. And then I can use that, and then I can teleport my merchant to there. But yeah, I don't know how I can get the five food. Because the dice of blooming come out at once. Well, you could use those to get. Oh, wait a minute. Six yeah, food. thank you. <laughs> you mean these tiles that I've got staring at me? Okay, so we we got to do it then. I think I think we got to do it. Um, so I'm going to choose this one. I'm not going to change it. I'm going to get five stone. I'm going to get this bonus tile, which goes there. Um, so we can do that later. I'm going to get two action points to move up the king's track. On two. That's my main thing done. Um, so yeah, I think just because I'm, I'm a bit short on space in my storehouse, I'm going to spend that to get three food. But I think I'm going to leave the moving that to there for now. So that's that's me done. Right, now it's your go, Robert. I put this lady here because I wanted to have three of the architect ones here. And I realised that he is an architect. Yeah. And she isn't because she's got the architect thing as but the immediate, but she's really yeah, powerful. That's so, can I put her in level two of a different? I don't mind. Yeah, a different thing. Wouldn't, wouldn't then I'll try and get anything. three architect ones. Like I've got one architect guy here. Yep. Um, so that action point that I had before you, has you, been you lost wasted. It. Yep. So okay, pick a dice. I'm thinking. I want to get the bonus for Troy. I've got to start moving my merchant, which is one, two, three, four, five. So I think the next tea game in the series is going to be called Truro, mm -hmm. I think. It's all about a, a Cornish town. <laughs> or maybe Tavistock. That's what we need. We need, Tavistock, we need a game nice. called Tavistock. So the trouble is, I only get one movement. If I go there, yeah, I get a crest, but which it's is one nice, movement. But one movement. So if I did it three times, I could get three movement, and that still wouldn't be <laughs> enough to get enough. me to there. Still not so enough. So are there any special tiles that move me? Now these these type can move your wagon when yep. you put them down, but only one, one space each. Yeah, yeah. So if I got um, and you can, yeah, you haven't taken any of those yet. Mm. Um, that's quite a lot of points for me because I've got three of them it's nine, on the board. Uh, it's 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 eighteen points. If you manage to end yeah. with your merchant in Twa, you get eighteen three, four, points. Five. Ah, what I want to do is get some food. Yeah, so and do, do what that. I do. <laughs> to do you want to buy some food. <laughs> you getting food is harder than me getting food. So, if I changed a one, if I paid money to change a one to a six, then I could get six food. Oh, of course. And That's do six this. food. And then, yeah. I forgot you can go around from a one so, to a six. So yeah, I'll pay two money to change that to a one to a six. Yeah, getting you... That gets me some change. Six food and the crest. So, have you given me... So there's the crest. Thank you. There's the six food. And you've yes. got one action point to use with your merchant. So then... Um... Yeah, if anybody's got any ideas of other small towns in um, Britain, starting with a T... Tunbridge Wells. Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> I've already got a house in Verona. I'm going to teleport. Tunbridge Wells Legacy. Oh, yeah, but, correction. That's now not That's now starts. It's oh, Royal it's Tunbridge, Royal Wells. Tunbridge Wells. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I used so to I live got in one... Thornton. So I've just got one action point on uh, on on, on the moving your version. Yes. And he's going to teleport to here in a minute anyway. So I can't see much. Because the three things are, he can take a, a tile from move, here. Take a tile, build, build a house. house. Yes. But there's no All he can do is move. Yeah. Position. yeah. Take some more photos. <laughs> so, 
So uh, that action point is wasted. Okay. But I do then use well, you might some as of well move food. it to here just in case okay. something else happens. I'll take another little picture of. Yeah. Go to Prague. The um, they've started working on the cathedral, but they're nowhere near finishing. No, I don't think we've started so yet. So now I want to put this here. That costs five. Yes, food. Into, so the has been touched. That is a task. Yeah. To put that there. Oh, you're going to do it immediately. Okay. So. Well, of course, it. I could do it later do it in later. the round, couldn't I? Yeah. Don't have to do it now. Okay, so I'll leave the trouble. Well, steps. except your your storehouse is a bit full. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe I'll use. Let me of course, spend yeah. this to get a to get a. Um, So you got three that's contract points, me. but again, that's taking up, it's taking up space. Take up a, that'll take Unless up you can again. fulfil it straight so away. Maybe there's one. There's three. So there. that's three. That's two. You could do two. that one. Uh, or you could do that one. That's that's better, isn't it? So. So you spend um, those three contract points to take that. Yes. Which you then complete then immediately. Complete straight away for six so points. One of them, three of them. That means I get a pillar could be useful later on. Yeah. So you haven't spent the five food. No, I'll, I'll leave that till later. So you want to take the five food back. Take five food back, Robert. Ah. Because you spent it. Okay. Okay. And you didn't move your merchant, and you didn't get the... Right, okay. Done. Okay. Over to me. Uh, before you do, oh. we're moving down one. Okay. Okay. I'll take this one, because that gets me one, one food. food. You get this bonus tile if you want it. And I'm going to get six. Six action points with your architect. Seven action points with my architect. Seven? Yep. Oh, because you're using the plus one tile straight, straight away. away. Okay, so seven. Yep. So. Seven lovely one, action points. One, two, two five Can left. You treat that, please. Oh, yeah. Okay, hold that five for a second because I'm activating I'm this. I'm holding this five. I'm going to use it to trade, so I'm going to exchange three, uh, two gold for. Three food. Okay, so you're using a contract tile to give you two contract points to do some exchanges. Yep. Then back we go again. Then I'll move one, two, I think it's food. Florence. 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 Yep. Yep. Four left. Four left. Uh, drop that down. Pillar. Three, three left. left. Um, There's nothing else to do there. Yep, so it'll just be one. I think I'll just move one, two, and stop there. That's your pillar. Sorry. <laughs> one, two, one, two. There. I've got one left. I'm not going to... Build the sandcastle. Use that last one, because I can't yeah. build anymore. Uh, I'm not going to have the contract out just yet. However, I then spend two gold for a stone, and then spend four stone... For to 15 points. Yep, for 15 point cathedral. There you go. Uh, putting you on... 89. Well, actually, I've still got one point. I still have that one point left. That's actually, is actually important. Um, because I then spend four food, move this crest to here, okay. which teleports me to, to wherever here. I go. Using my last point, you take, take that. Which I was about to take. At the same time, placing that there gives me my plus one marker on nice. this Nice. Another track. completed building. I'll then immediately cash this in for one of each resource, except gold. Nice. Three, four. Bish bash bosh. Right. Did you bring your resources up a little bit? Did you pay the food to put your... Yes, I did. Yes. Right. That was such an epic turn. I've completely lost track of what I was doing, apart from taking that. Except now I won't. Um. So... Contracts are good, but people are good. And I think I need more people. Where are my pillars? There. You did give me the six points when I did my six point contract. I don't know. Pretty sure we did. I think you probably did, yeah. Yes, because I moved from 29 to 35. Okay. There are a few of these things that I want to do. Out of 
the characters. Uh, can't take all of these. So, oh, it's the Jester. The Jester would get me three movement points, which could be the wagon. Although now you've done that, I kind of I'm going to save that for that. Uh, right. That's only a two. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the two. I'm not going to change it, so it's going to be two wool. I'm then going to get the bonus tile. And then I have five action points for taking characters. Before I do any of that, I'm going to complete this contract, which gets me six points. So five action points for characters. Now, one. Two, getting me two points. Three. Four, five. And I think that's it. Do I have any task? Where have I got pillars? I've only got a pillar in London. And I've already built a piece of Westminster Abbey, if that's what it is. That's Westminster Abbey, isn't it? I think so. I think so. Um, and I'm going to place the crest there on my next turn, so I think I'm done. Robert. Right, I want to do this action. If I take one of these, I can get five action points plus one, which is quite nice. So do some character stuff. And do I want gold? Do I want... That's wool, isn't it? That's wool. Um, it would be quite nice to get some stone. Mm. I've got this that can change the colour of a dice. Yeah, so whenever you take a die, you can change it to any colour. Yeah, gold is very useful, so maybe I'll take some gold. Uh, yep. So let's take... Two gold. Take that for two gold. And then you've got six action points taking characters. Thank you, Paul's Fingers. So let's use one action point to take this guy. Mm -hmm. Storehouse is full. Yes, yeah, good question, Michael. Who is going to win? Who is going to win? Uh, oh. Okay, yeah, so Jonathan's message got held back because he accidentally put a swear word. I'll do a task. Whoops. I'll do a task. He meant to write shirts. To put that there. Which means I spend five. So food. now you're doing it. You're doing the five food. And you're going to teleport, teleport your merchant, merchant to Trois. Uh, that means I've got a space in here. Um, so um, I've got five more, five more action points. Uh, let's um, get rid of all of them. That's an action point. At one action point to get rid of all of them. So yeah, yeah they're all gone. Got four left. And yes, you two are wearing shirts of the same colour that matches your player pieces. <laughs> In fact, yours is almost identical. I wore the shirt because I was hoping to play green. <laughs> but it's exactly and the I, same shade of green. When I checked the rule book, I saw that there were green yeah. pieces. So I should have worn my purple shirt and then we'd have all been sorted. <laughs> 
So um, I've got four left. I'll use one action point to pick this up. Got three left, so I can start putting people down. Um, let's put this one. So that one is move your architect one oh, space and, and then, then place a pillar right. where your architect is. Okay, so I'll put that one down um, for three actions. Okay, put him at the top. Yep. Um, I won't move the architect. So that's used my action points. Yep. I won't move the architect, but I will build a pillar where the architect is. Yep. So got none left, and I don't think I've got any. Okay. No. Nope. Right. I've got any tasks so, to corruption do. Corruption tile zero. It doesn't move. That's Rob, me. last action of round three. Taking this one here for four. Is the oh, that's the list of wool, isn't it? Four wool. Four wool, four stone. Um, I think we take four stone. Four stone. Hmm. I need that one as well. And I will take this. So you bonus tile. Okay, then I have three wild actions. Three wild actions. Oh, well, there's so many of these things I want to do. Why did I go to London? It was a silly place. I'm going to spend my three here. See, that gives me four. So you got four action points on taking contract. Yeah. So first thing I'm going to do is exchange one wool yep. for an iron and a stone. So you've got three action points left. Yep. And then going to turn this will into a gold. Two action points left. This will into a food. One action point left. I'll probably leave it there. Actually. Okay. Um, but I'm then going to spend two iron. Yep. To, to complete, complete that this task. Give me a total of three VPs. Three points. One, two, three. Freeing up one of them. All done. And I think I am indeed done. Right. So, if I can just sneak ahead of you on here, that's going to get me that, it's going to get me that, that's going to be awesome. But, it's not doing any of the other stuff that I actually want to do. Now, there is that contract, but that requires five iron, which I don't have and I can't get five iron. Now, I can get five iron by choosing that action, which is the contract action. So actually that does all work out. I just don't know whether that's the thing I actually want to do. Hmm. Oh. I really wanted to do some architecting this turn, but I think, I think I'm going to choose this one. So I choose this die. It is a three iron, so I get three iron. Uh, I take the bonus tile, which I don't have to use yet. Nope. So I'm going to keep that. I then get four contract points. I'm going to choose this one for two. I've got two left. I spend the five iron to complete it, getting me 14 points. 
uh, one, two, three, plus 11, which means we need my plus 100 banner. Um, how many have I got left? Three. No, two. two. I had four. I spent two on taking that. Yep. Call him, you completed that, so you got one on the uh, king track. Yes. Thank you. The reason why I did it. Um, so I got two contract points left. Tell you what, I could actually... Can't quite do that. Can't quite do that. I haven't got enough for that. So it could be this. I mean, it's a big one. It is a big one. Am I going to be able to do that by the end of the game? I don't know. With one round left, that seems like a bit of a stretch. To be honest, but I'm going to try for it. So I'm going to take that. I have one contract point left, which I will use this. And I will spend uh, one food. And I will turn it into a wool and an iron. Okay, so that's the end of my four contract points, which was take that, take that, do an exchange. So these slide down. Just check the chat. Am I playing right? Yes, I am. Gaming cheats? What am I doing? Uh oh, Schrodinger's cheat. What am I doing? What am I doing? What have I done wrong? You're the same character in two houses. Who has? You have, you cheaty sod. Oh. The crown lady. Yep. Sorry. You're absolutely right. This is going to be spotting this. almost impossible for me to undo. But, as I mentioned earlier on, you cannot have the same character in two houses. Just take the single house one off and put the house back on. And I think otherwise we're going to be unpicking this for a, a while. So if I, if, I, if I do that and just say that's it. Yeah, because it was Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you, chat, for noticing. No, I'm just paranoid. No, yeah, I've got all five of my yeah. different. Yeah, right. We've we've sort of fixed it as much as we can. Yeah, Paul's paid a penalty for um, not paying attention. Yeah, yeah. It's hard work running a stream, teaching, and everything else. Um. Anyway, where were we? I've done my contract points. I probably want to use something here, which was the spending that for three food. Give me five food. Spending the five food to place the chest. There, crest, crest, which moves this to here, which is going to get me 12 points. Per crest. Yeah, and I think that's it. Oh, and I score 50 points because my name's Paul. I think that's in the rules as well. I see silence, sends across the board again. Yeah, but I did that ages ago. Has the chat been shouting at me for the last 10 minutes? Because that was, that was quite a while ago that I did that. But yeah, thank you very so much. We weren't, we weren't paying attention either. So. No. Okay, I'm going to take this one. Yeah, um, the chat is actually quite taking, hard for me to see, so apologies for that. Instead of taking wool, I'm going to use this to change it to a dark grey. Okay. And take stone. Take four stone. So four stone. So that's finished with... Uh, Stone, and then I get. So it's from here. Mm -hmm. So I think I'd like to do character stuff, which means I do get the bonus. So from this, it gives me three actions. Three action points plus one bonus. Yeah, making four action points. So I can put this one here for two. Yep. That gives me two movements. Now, are you sure you don't have two characters the same in different buildings? Because that would be cheating. I don't. <laughs> can't I've managed to avoid it. I can't That's imagine. That's one thing I've managed to avoid. There's I can't no imagine anybody doing here. that. No one here is that morally bankrupt. No, 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 no. And I'll put this one here. So that's three action points. I've got one remaining. That gives me three movements of my architect. So not only is the building full, but the building is also complete. Right, so I get this. You get the house. And I get the thing. You get your plus three tile right. here. Yes. Which means architecting for you. That was part of my plan. In the future is going to be pretty awesome. So um, I've got three architect movements, and I'll try and build a cathedral here as well. So let's go. 
Well, if I come two. here, I could build a bit of cathedral yeah, here. Yeah, you one, two, so, and put a pillar. One, two. Well, it's three movements. Oh, so it's not three point. Right, okay. I can't build a pillar using that thing. No. You can walk around but, the town square. Yeah, yeah. It's, in, they say right, it's very nice. You're in the right position for but it. But I'm going to do a task to build a bit of cathedral in Firenze. So is that four? Four, so um, four stone gets you four 11 stone. points. That's 46. Thank you. I think I'm done. I'm done. And that is it. Okay, so we do the king's scoring. So it is me. Yep. I get that. I am now the first player. I score one point. Green loses three. Stay put. That green goes there. Nope. Green goes on top. Oh, that goes there. Top, yes. Bottom is right. better. Yeah. Right. Now we do the fair. So the fair is here. We are all eligible for scoring it. So it is six points per crest. I have two crests. I've got 12 points. 24. Rob, you've got four. how many? Four. Same as Robert. I thought you managed to get five. So four is 24 points. So eight plus 16. I've got 24. 24. 67. Okay, Robert. Rob, we need one of your oh, yep. plus 100s. Okay, yeah, that's the fair done. And now we set up for the last round. So as I mentioned earlier on, in the last round, you don't put a tile here. So whoever is uh, ahead on the king's track in the last round of the game, it's four points. Right, guys, I'm going to rotate it. It has been rotated. Don't forget that, Robert. You built that cathedral. Oh, thank you. Did so we not take Did it? you put just the points on? Yeah, you've got, you got the points. Right, so I definitely put the points on, did I not? Yeah. Yeah, you, just, you just got to give him the piece. Yeah. Are you sure that's not the second piece? Perhaps it was, because there's, there's only... Oh, because you built? Yeah. Ah, right. So, okay. yeah, I didn't realise you built it. Yeah. Got all the dice. In fact, this clicks on. That one clicks Done on. that. And um, bonus tiles. Again, all of the bonus tiles are being taken. I'll do the sixes and the ones. And the twos. And the fives. Okay, so off we go. Final action phase of the game. This time there is a fair in Verona and it is three points per pillar. So, oh. This is the turn where I wanted to do all of my architecture stuff, and I should have spotted, but the architecture is on one action point. Yep. That is horrendous. So, I'm going to take the Jester, and I'm not going to change it. So I get three iron, I'm going to take this, and then, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to spend those two for wool. That's not enough. Oh yeah. Corruption, we all lose two. It's not enough. I'm still going to spend that. Uh, no, I'm going to hang fire on that. I'm going to spend this, because why not? It's two gold. And can I have two points, please? Right, so... I've got four action points and I'm going to have to use them for architecting. Oh man, this is... I need to teleport my architect somewhere. I've got a bug crawling across the board. There you go. Um, hmm. oh, this is really tricky now and you've got your th plus three on there haven't you mm. I didn't actually see that it was going to be a one action I didn't, space but 
I should have done it last turn. I meant to do it last turn. I was about to get seven movement points with the architect, but then I got greedy and thought, I'll grab that instead. And actually, that's really not worked. It's not worked at all. So I've got four action points. It is going to be to do my architect, but I don't know where I'm going to get to. It's probably going to be... Get to here. I could get to there, and then it's three stone for nine points. Here no, is four stone. Have, I'm going to have to get the pillar down there. Oh, okay, so I, I can get there, but not place the pillar. Yeah. One, two, three. So I think it's going to be one... Oh, oh no, that's even more. Oh, so that's your pillar. Sorry, that's yeah. your architect. One, two, three, four. No, that's four away. <laughs> so Paul's is crawling again. Ah, oh, this is horrendous. I've got all of these pillars... I've got one, two, three, four, five, six pillars. This is all going to be my big final move. And it's all gone wrong. It's all gone wrong. It's all gone very, very wrong. I need a teleport for my architect, which I have here, but it costs four food. Hmm. Wow. I mean, if I hang around, somebody else is going to take that. That's the problem. Yeah. <coughs> somebody else is, is definitely going to take it. So let, let's let just do it. And... Because yeah, you might be lucky with a pillar build on one of the other characters or something. Yeah. There are various things that can cause a trigger like that. So yeah, we'll just go... One, two, three, four. And um, um, we'll just... Oh, I've done it again. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Someone let the gate open and some Paul's <laughs> Cathedral's crawled over the channel again. Right. So there's my four things. Now, I can st I can do this contract. But... I'm just looking at this. I don't... Oh, no, that's all right. Yeah, so I am gonna I am gonna cash that in for two wool. So I've got the five wool. I've got the four iron. I need five iron. I could buy the two iron if I want to to do that contract, which is twenty eight points. It's big. It is big. That's a lot of points. But I think I'm gonna hang fire on that. So I think I'm done. Wow. So yeah, sorry about that. Okay, that's right. So over to me. I'm going to take this one. So you okay. six stone. Yep. Which one comes with one of them? Because why not? So that gets me six stone. Do to do the king's track. Oh, was that from earlier? That, that, no, I was, that was from earlier. That was your first one. Yeah, we did it. Uh, okay, and then I get one architect point. Which is to drop that in there. And then spend six stone to get 21 points by building. 21 points. Oh my God. 37. 37. Uh, I think that's it for me for now. Okay. I'll take this one for six stone. I'm going to put this in my hand so I don't forget to, <laughs> to flip it over. Then I get one action on Architect plus three makes four. Four. Nice. So Very cool. nice. One. Yeah, the, the things that boost the number of actions you get at this stage are very useful. Yeah. Very, very useful. Where do I want to go next? Stone left. Two, three, four. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can do. Okay. Um, I built. I built that cathedral. 
I could cool. build this one. This costs two stone. I could build two stone that. for nine points. Yep. You, you get that. Thank you. And green gets nine points. Where's green? Here. Over there. Nine points. So, is that 76? Six. Yep. All done? Yep. Right. Corruption is minus one. That goes there, that goes there. Right. So, no cheating. So, oh, walk an orbit way. Well, in order for me to do architecting, I've got to take six I, iron, which you and and do one, or I do another jester. Yeah. A jester is at least four, because um, there's no. I mean, the other option is that I get food, and I somehow get a crest. And then put the crest on here, which gets me to teleport my architect Lose, somewhere. But he still doesn't build anything. Yeah, I'll have to do that next time. So, we are going to take the four. We're going to spend two gold to turn it into a three, which gets me three food. I then take the three. And then I get four action points on architecting. First action point is to place a pillar there. Two, three, four. I move the right piece. Things are looking better. I then spend three stone as a task to get nine points. Five. Right. All done? Not quite. Yeah. Yeah, I am all done. Okay. There's one I'm action left. Spend two gold, so turn that five to a four. The chat's gone a lot quieter since uh, I've stopped cheating. <laughs> I'll take four food and go up and the crest and go up four points on the um this fella three points on the king's track. Three points for blue. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, then I spend six food to drop this crest actually no, this crest was bought first. This crest in there. Oh, of course that's a pillar anywhere on the board, isn't it? It just drops a oh hang on, would he? I'm not going to do that because I haven't got the spare pillar ready. Got a pillar. Uh, second boss, I frantically rethink my turn. Um, Tip a six food back whilst I think. If I do that, I can't do that, which means I then can't do that. Um, Light grey is wool, isn't it? Light grey is wool, yes. So I think... Yes, I'm going to stop there. Okay. Green. Your penultimate I turn. I'm looking at this dice, but I'm going to spend two money to change it from a five to a six, which means that it goes here. Yep, you get six gold. Six gold. And you get four architect actions. Because of your uh, super powered plus three. Which I haven't managed to get out. So let's go one, two. Uh, I've run out of pillars. That was that was careless, wasn't it? I ran out of pillars. Would you like to borrow <laughs> some? I have. <laughs> I didn't know, man. They're available for rent. I have a <laughs> plethora of pillars. I've got two more, two more available, two more actions. So I can't pick up any bonus tiles because they're mostly there are. They, it's, they, it's only London that has them left. Is it? So oh, yeah. I could. Oh, and Bruges. There's a bonus tile in Bruges that's actually. 
really, really nice. Yeah. Why oh, didn't is, I take yeah, I, that? I think I went past that. I, without I went past it. it. Why didn't I take it? I was too busy trying to get to Leipzig to get the fair oh. So, yeah, that's a really nice one, that. Typical. Um, so I will move to there, and then one action point is lost. Mm -hmm. That's a bit of a shame, but I can cash in five stone to build contribute a piece of the Prague Cathedral. Seventeen yes. points. You could see the the construction plans were looking very uh, intricate. Okay. I think that's final corruption tile. tile. Mm -hmm. Nobody moves. Right. So my last action of the game. There's a whole range of things that I want to do. And of course, I'm getting me food, but I don't actually have a crest. So that whole plan is completely out the window. I don't know why I took the three food. Crest, yeah, but I'd have to take that die to do it, which means I'm not actually then doing anything. I'm taking a contract, which I can't do anything with, and I'd get the crest, and all I'd do is I'd move my architect, but then, yeah. I mean, I'm not even scoring this round. That's the thing. I'm also not even in Verona. Completely forgot about that. But you're only getting six points for being there, so it's all... Yeah, it, it's the it's the end game scoring that we haven't explained yet, but the end game scoring is pillars multiplied by houses on the board is points. So the more pillars that I get, I just don't know why I took this three food. So I'm thinking it might end up being characters that I want to do, but I kind of don't know why. Why do I want to do characters? Because all that's going to do is complete buildings, which isn't... Oh no, completed buildings get your points at the end of the game, if you've got three of them. Um, yeah, it's kind of fizzled a bit here, because I'm messed up. And I could spend the two gold to change one of the dice, but if I do... If you get that item, yeah, you can complete the first one. This one, it's not just five VPs; it's only completed. Yeah, but I've, I've, that's only two completed buildings. Mm. And then you've got. Yeah, I need the characters to to fill the board up. In fact, is it completed buildings? Yes, it's completed buildings. Completed building. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's just. Uh, and again, not picking that up on the way through. I mean, I'm in Prague. I can put a pillar on the board. That pillar on the board is going to get me three points because I've got three buildings. Yep. That That's it. So I do this. I get six wool, which is going to get me a point and a half. It just seems really weak. Um... I don't know whether to move up here. Moving up here is probably more points. To be honest. But if I did that, I then wouldn't have the number of iron. How much? Oh, one short. I took the wrong resources earlier. Because I can use that tile. Where's my merchant? Okay, I've got a I've got to move two, so I could. Yeah, it's not quite enough, is it? But I say it's only six points. But six points might be the best thing. Oh, this is this is horrendous. This is um. Yeah, so if I'd have. I can activate that, which would have got rid of the two wool, but then I need the iron. So I buy the iron with the two gold, which means I can't spend the two gold on changing a dice. That's what I'm thinking. Ah, the other option is that I do spend the two gold on changing this dice into a three, and then I get the three gold back. That would then get me the jester, which means I could do this for four action points, which would be pillar, move, pillar, and that effectively gets me eight points at the end of the game because I've just realised I've got a house there. Mm -hmm. 
And then if I could have got to Verona, that would have been fantastic. But I can't do everything. So I think that's probably my best move. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm going to choose this dice. I am spending two gold to turn the two into a three. I then get three gold. Mm -hmm. I then have four action points, which I spend on the architecture action. The first one is to put a pillar there. The second one is to move to here. The third one is to put a pillar there. And the fourth one is to buy an ice cream. Yeah, doesn't doesn't matter. Move back to Prague. Right, now. Ah. We're all good. I'm going to spend two gold to buy a piece of stone. And then I'm going to use five stone to finish Prague Cathedral, which is 13 points. Could I have 13 points, please? I'm then going to spend another two gold to buy an iron, and then with five iron and five wool, I'm going to complete that, which gets me 28 points. Okay. And then, not done yet, uh, I also get a character point with that. So with that character point, I am going to take, this doesn't actually matter because I can't move it in. Michael is saying you've got a cool tile that I know, allows you to activate. I know. That I've, I've been trying to tie that up to do other stuff. I've got a character point. That character point I can't do anything with, really, apart from take something. And then I might as well use this uh, to activate all of the characters in one building. So I get two points and I move one space up on there. Uh, which was the dice that I took? This one. That one. I think that's probably the best thing that I could... So I'm not going to take part in the final fair, but I've got four pillars on the board and four houses, so that's 16 points at the end. Right, okay, done, finished. Okay. I'll take this one to get me five wool. Right, God. I can't take the bonus because I'm full. Then I spend three wool... To immediately complete this one, which gets me six points. Six points. Six. Okay. And then. I'm going to spend. That gets me. Oh, should replace that. Now I spend six food to move this crest to here. Unwanted. Which lets me drop a pillar in somewhere. I think the best one, yeah, normally you have those ones, I'm going to drop here. I think it's the next best points. Eight. Get myself eight points from that one. By spending three. And then. I got the dice. I took the dice. Four movement points. Cheers. One, two, three. Yep, four. So you can take part in the fair. All done? Yep. Finished. Right, Robert, final action of the game. Mm -hmm. Those crests were quite hard to find, weren't they? Yeah. So I could get a crest here and put it there. That would finish another building. It would be a completed building and would get It'd you five, five points. points as well. Plus, it would get you an extra five points because you'd have four completed yeah. buildings at the end of the game. Yeah, so I'd need to change one of these with some gold. So that seems quite good. Um, and you could probably also take that and complete it with gold with anything right five resources so okay yep so let's spend two money to change um 
What's the blue one? Iron. Change that to the two. Mm -hmm. Go to this there. So you get two iron. Two iron. But that has to be five five resources of the same type. I don't believe so. No, I thought it was just five resources. I think it's just any five resources. And then um, each resource may be different. Oh, oh, I see. That's very nice. So I've got no identical resources. When you're gaining resources, they have to be different. But that has to be five the same. Mm. So apologies, I think I we played that wrong earlier gold, on today. Because I've got seven gold at the yeah, moment. Yeah, it is That's identical rough. resources. So I take this thing. Yep. That could be useful. Um, five action points. So I'll spend the food to put it on... Oh, wait a minute. I'll, I'll see. So yep. first I will... So you got five contract action points. So I could do that with five... I've got some. You could I do could that do as well. One. Well, you could take those two for four, and you could do both of them. Right. That's really good. Very nice. Okay. So one, two. Yeah. Do you want to do them now? And then, so I'll do the two wool, and so that's four I've spent. I've got one action point remaining. Yeah. So that's two iron, two wool. That goes there. It means that I've got the pillar seven, seven points. points. Yep. And then your next one. Um, is eight points. Can you grab Rob's? Robert's well, I'm hundred. wondering if I want to put a pillar down here. Okay. Because I could spend. I need four food. So to buy four food to go there, well, you've I need got, to spend more gold than I have. Yeah, so I you've only got that. one point left as well. So I'll spend the two food to put this on here, so in the which gets me five, five points. points. Yep. Then I'll complete this contract five gold with for another eight. Gold. Nice. Okay, I think we're done. So, we're supposed to shuffle these down, but it doesn't really matter because the game's over. So... Final king scoring. Rob, you sneaked ahead of me. Yep. So you get four points. You lose one. I get. Well, I lose one. one. Robert, story of your game. You lose another three. Uh, these then reset. Not that it matters. And then we do the final fair. So, so it's, uh, it's you two. Three points per pillar. I get 15, please. 15. Nine. Okay, and now we do end of game scoring. So end of game scoring, we didn't actually mention, but it's up here. So it's for completed buildings. So this icon here means a full building, and this means you've got the crest on it. So these two icons together mean completed buildings. If you have three, it's five points, four, it's 10, five, it's 20, six, it's 30. Then you multiply the number of houses you have on the board by the number of pillars you have on the board. That gets you points. And then every four resources is worth one point. So first of all, completed buildings, I have one. What do I get for one? Zero. <laughs> I have one, two, three, so that's five. Three completed buildings is five points. I have four for ten points. Ten points. Ten points. Ten points. Okay. Twenty-nine. Pillars times houses. Think mine's sixteen. Yep. I count four pillars and four houses. So you're sixteen as well? No, no, for you. Oh, for me, yeah. I have five and five, so that's So you're twenty-five. We need to flip over your thing to 200. Boom. I've got nine points. Three times three. 38. Okay. And then every four resources is a point. I have three resources. I so one. I get three quarters of a point. <laughs> so I've got a total of one extra point. One. Three quarters of a point for me. Isn't there you go. That's it. <laughs> Final scores. Four. Rob Two, wins. 201. 201. Me, 193 and three quarters asterisk. <laughs> and Robert, 138. That was right down to the wire. Between, like, when you did that massive jump over the top, that amazing it, turn. And, then, and I was like, oh, I have 28 points. I was, oh, I, was another... I was just, I was 
just too food shy of getting that extra one down, which would be another 50. You didn't need it. So, yeah, I, I don't know what the scores would have been if I hadn't have put them in there. Yeah. I think me losing the building, I, I, who knows? Who knows? We so are done. Building cathedrals is still a strong strategy, a lot of even, though, even, even though there were no fairs. Actually, yeah, said to I, build. I had an angle to get that one, so you two managed to jump in. I was mm. going to get 17 from that, so I got about half what I was going to. So, we've played this game twice today. Um, and as I mentioned earlier on, and Chuck said this to me earlier on today, the fairs that you choose is the major variability in the game. Whichever ones are, and the, how many are there in the game? Uh, let's have a look. So there's, um, there's, there's, there's loads here. Right, there's, there's, there's quite there's a few. 10, uh, 11, um, I count 11 possible fairs currently, and over eight possible locations, not accounting your top one. There are 11 fair tiles. So yeah, so that, that is, I mean, this game felt very different because oh, yeah. what we were doing was very different. There is also the small term tacticalness of, of what you do turn to turn, because this is always changing. What you take, which resources you want to take, changing the dice. I love a good action selection mechanism, and this is this is really nice. And the costs of the cathedrals, that's randomly that, determined. That's, that's variable as well. Um, yeah. Now, as I mentioned at the start, this is a sponsored video. Board and Dice have commissioned me to create this video to help you learn how to play the game. Therefore, I should not give any personal opinion on the game. But you two are, are allowed to. You've played it twice today. We learnt it this afternoon. Thoughts? If you're comfortable giving your thoughts on the game. So a, a little bit heavier than I was expecting it to be. Because Robert had read the rule book this afternoon. Well, so. I, I read I read some of it, but I hadn't, I hadn't managed yeah. to read all of, all of the bits. Now, when you're saying that the game was heavier than you thought it would be from reading the rule book... Partly based on who the designers were, Okay, maybe. Okay. But... Um, maybe it's just because I'm new to the game, right? But uh, yes, these these the way these fairs work could create a lot of different situations. I yeah, think. I mean my my thoughts on it after reading the rules and playing it twice, and this is a subjective opinion, objective opinion, both, <laughs> is that the game is deeper than. I thought it would be from reading the rules. When I read through the rules, I went, ah, oh, five different actions. The actions are relatively simple. Obviously, I don't know how you put it all together, but I imagined that the game was on the lighter end of the medium scale, certainly not going into the heavy end. But then when we started playing it, the decision space opened up, and I think the game is deeper. The, the, the depth to complexity ratio is a good one. Because there's a lot of games coming out that seem to be a bit over complex and it's like are we really gaining anything for that extra complexity this seems to have streamlined a lot of that fiddliness out but it's still got the depth yeah i think the rules the actions themselves are straightforward yeah but there is a interesting level of analysis based on both yeah what's what comes out on here because you're not going to know before you through the next three actions what resources you know there's always going to be 11 resources between one and six and the yes. higher the resources the fewer the actions yeah but you never know whether it's going to be the resources you want and need because mm. it can swing quite heavily one way or the other it's possible to get none out at all of the one you might actually want of any level and that can dictate what actions you're going to try and want to take in order yeah. to maximize you know it's a constant fight between the resources and the number of actions and yeah you know, this adds some interest. I, mean, I wasn't actually going to go for this one, and I sort of okay. did because just things fell yeah. in the right order. And the whole being able to manipulate this sort of change the order can be sort of key. Yeah. And it's a strange resetting of the, of the negatives. It is. Yeah, so I remember thinking the first time, well, well, well if it's always going to reset, you know, is there any point in throwing points at that? But then I realised, yes. well, there is, because the negatives can <laughs> really start to yeah. But getting control going first and getting those bonus actions can really help. Yeah. But also monitoring control of this. A number of times I got just stung where I couldn't take mm. a bonus token because I hadn't played something the previous turn. Only having four, that fills up so quickly. Yeah. I think the four basic actions are fairly simple. But when you add in the tasks, oh, yeah. the tasks create a little bit of an extra 
yeah. little puzzle that I'll you've got to I'll do my one solve. thing, and then I'll and do four other things. The so two of them added together. Another thing, just to mention it, uh, the game does come with action titles. So if you wanted to, rather than have those actions in that order, is you can shuffle these action tiles and you can place them out at random. Uh, try not to put the same ones and over them. Ends up, and ends up exactly the same. the same. So yeah, you can have that. Uh, and you might think, well, how, how different is that going to make the game? Well, that that is going to make the game different because... Um, such as what happened in the last turn, I didn't spot the, oh, wait a minute, we're getting six actions as the architect, and now we're only getting one. It's which actions follow which actions. So I think once you're once you're quite good at the game, you'll know that, oh, wait a minute, that action follows this one, and that one's getting better. So yeah, you can put those on there included in the game. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. Now, we've only played it twice at three player. I don't know how it plays at two, other than you block off some of the spaces on the board. So the board gets effectively smaller with two. If you're playing with four, it opens up and you get more bonus tiles on there. You get more dice as well. So it's five dice per player, one of each color per player. So the number of dice changes. And there's a solo mode as well, which I which I haven't covered. Now, I do do a lot of solo playthroughs on the channel. I usually do two to three solo playthroughs on the channel. Um, and it's my patron supporters that quite often vote on which solo game I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play next. So... When I get back from Essen, I will be doing another poll on which solo games my patron supporters want to see me play, and this is going to get added to the list. So I would like to cover the solo mode for this, but I would like to cover the solo mode of all of the 15 new games that I'm getting over the last couple of months. Um, and it'll be patron supporters that vote on yeah which ones I'm going to be doing. But this one will definitely be added to the list. I don't know what the solo mode is like. I haven't looked at it. We will, we will maybe find out. Um, and there you go. That's answered Genway's question. We're all done. Thank you very much to you two for joining me. Thank you to everybody for watching. And as I mentioned at the start, big thank you to all of my patron supporters who help from the channel. If you like the content that I create and you are not currently a patron supporter, you could become one at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Patreon supporters get access to the Slack channel uh, and exclusive behind the scenes videos. So this afternoon when we learnt how to play it, that was streamed as a live video if people like that sort of thing. And even two hours this morning, me getting this game out, setting up all the cameras, I live streamed that because, you know, why not? <laughs> um... But yeah, lots of other benefits of becoming a patron supporter if you are able to. Other than that, we're done. That is the last video which is going to be on the channel this week. I am filming another video tomorrow, which will go live out to patron supporters, but that's not going to be on the channel publicly until next week. But I will be back next week for the last week of content before Essen Spiel, and we've got a few more games lined up for you. But other than that, thank you very much to Board and Dice for being here in the chat tonight, and thank you very much for supporting the channel and sponsoring the video. And we'll see you all next time. Take care, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.